This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. HelloFresh.com. Receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code Andrew30. Remember, go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code Andrew30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. Thank you to HelloFresh. And by Audible. Get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash Andrew or text Andrew to 500. Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Jan. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only Mr. Paul Thorod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. How are you? I am. I'm not in my studio right now. I can see that. Uh, we were going to do the show on Tuesday, but I had a very important doctor's appointment that I had to make, and I'm in my office right now. And this beautiful sign behind me uh, speaks the truth. Paul does love Andrew. <laughs> sure. The weird thing is that sign's actually in that room all the time. And that's not even my sign. I have no right. idea. I'm not even in my office right now. Uh, we do have it a lot to talk about. Um, <laughs> it could be two different people. Uh, I, For people watching this on video, I got the Galaxy S9 Plus. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of comments to make about it because this is my first dive into Android in about a year. So it's been almost exactly... It's actually exactly a year when I started using the iPhone as my everyday phone. And it's... I don't know, Paul. I mean, you you do this all the time, where you kind of go back and forth between Android and iOS, and you know, you, this was the first time that I took like a year off of Android, and I'm having a real difficult time adjusting back to it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Uh, I it may be too late for me. Yeah. I. Um, you, you made an interesting choice in some ways because the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus or whatever is particularly complicated, even from an Android perspective, you know, because there's so much going on on that phone, like Android or uh, Samsung just so much. piles it yeah. on, you know, and it's, yeah, um, you, you must have noticed this, like I from the moment you be. open the box, even the stuff in the box is kind of crazy. <laughs> It's like five headphones and then wires yeah, and stuff. It, it, yeah, little d- all the stuff and that you got to wrap out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got everything is like in a in a plastic container that you got to like right. peel open like candy. Yeah, you open up the <laughs> uh, an iPhone box and it's like the Ark of the Covenant. Like light shoots out of it, and you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, the Samsung. It's like a bunch of crap falls all all over the floor. And it's like welcome to Android. Yeah, you know, listen. By the way. A lot of positive, and I also have a lot of negative that I want to talk about. So uh, yeah. before the Android people start telling me how I'm, I'm a, I'm a total, uh, I'm incompetent. I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I'm an Apple fanboy. I have to tell you, um, one of the reasons, primarily, and this is my tease into this topic uh, before we talk about our sponsor, is that I have become so engulfed in the iOS experience where it's all, it's going to be very difficult for me to leave this to abandon iOS because I'm so tied into it now. Interesting. And that's I mean, part I, of the problem. I go back and forth, right? So I um, I find the transition to be fine. But it, but it's literally because I use both systems all the time. I would imagine if you've been using I, uh, iOS for a while, iPhone, um, and, you know, things just work, it's kind of a nice little deal. <laughs> like I yeah. could imagine yeah. going to the Samsung in particular would be difficult for sure. Yeah, uh, I have this to talk about and a whole lot more, actually. On Therat.com, you, you posted a... Um, you started mm-hmm. reviewing the HP NVX2, which I'm very interested in. Uh, this yep. is a Qualcomm device. Yes, it is. And I'm very curious what the battery life's like, what the performance is like, a whole lot more. I mean, I think they were saying that it delivered 20 hours of battery life and it's always connected. I, I'm curious to find out if that's true or not. Uh, obviously, okay. we'll, we'll save that for uh, the next topic. But before we do, I want to take a moment and talk about our great sponsor, Suncast. And it's Casper. <laughs> uh, this is a. I was gonna throw do the old radio thing and start being like, "Who's our sponsor right now?" You know, like Howard would do. Sure. Uh, guys, sure. I've spoken about Casper mattresses for God, how many years now, Paul? We've been talking about this, and my first actually, this is actually really funny. And this is not 
I'm going to do my Andrew line. This is not part of the read, but the, my first <laughs> Casper mattress, um, they sent it over and I was supposed to be on vacation at that time. I was supposed to be in Mexico and my flight got canceled. I ended up not going on vacation with my wife for our anniversary. Instead, we got a Casper mattress and she kept nice. saying how um, she goes, listen, so what did, what did you do? Trade in the trade in the vacation for the mattress because it was so phenomenal. I mean, it feels like a million bucks, this thing. And it's excellent. Why is it excellent? Well, I can tell you from my own pers firsthand experience that, you know, I suffer from a terrible back issue. I have four herniated discs. I got a herniation in my neck. I got four in my lower back. And the mattress that I sleep on is a important part of my everyday living. <laughs> I can't pick a cheapo mattress. I can't pick a super soft mattress. It's only a very select type of mattress I could actually sleep on. And by the way, this is not an endorsement. This is not a doctor's endorsement. This is nothing like that. This is just my personal experience. And I had purchased a very expensive mattress uh, many years ago, and I regretted it every single day. It was way too soft. And this is going to one of these big box stores. And I slept on this this thing for like 10 minutes and they pinpointed, they said, oh, look, your legs are a two, but your back is a four. And this is the mattress you need. And all wrong. It was the worst experience ever. I absolutely hated it. It was terrible. So when I got Casper to come on board as an advertiser, they sent me a mattress. And said, Listen, we want to get your honest opinion of what you think this is. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, it's been a great night's sleep ever since. And they have a phenomenal offer for you guys. Get $50 off select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and use the promo code Andrew at checkout. Guys, don't just believe me. Paul sleeps on a Casper mattress. Paul, uh, in his guest room, he has a Casper mattress. So this is something that we both use and absolutely love. And you will too. And they have some great stuff for you guys. A um, little backstory here. It's all made in the USA. Uh, you got a hundred day risk free trial. So listen, we we spend one third of our lives on a mattress. It's important that you sleep on the mattress before you commit to it, right? So that's why Casper offers you a hundred night tryout. This is great. Um, phenomenal quality, great stuff, great people. And a great offer. $50 off towards your select mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and using the promo code Andrew at checkout. I want to thank Casper for supporting the show. And of course, terms and conditions do apply. Uh, let's start off with the Galaxy S9 Plus. Uh, yeah. You have yours, right? I do. Uh, and okay. Before you, I tell you what mm -hmm. I've experienced. So I've had it. You've had it a couple days more than me. I've had it since Friday. And I used it primarily as my main phone all weekend uh, because I was, uh, you know, I was, I, I, I kind of wanted to try out the camera. I went out for St. Patty's day with my wife and kids. Uh, the kids got belligerently drunk, you know, the normal, right? <laughs> yes. is, that, is that what you do with a two-year-old? Sure. No, sure. we, we have this tradition where we, we get together with our friends and we went out and I took my phone to snap the photos. I, the camera is stunning. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, it is. great uh, camera, yeah. but there's something called less is more, right? Oh, they yeah. may have given us a little too many options here. Yep. And that's by, true by everywhere, us, by the way. I mean, um, by, but that's true everywhere. So before I go and dive camera. into this, including the camera, yeah. What, what, give me your overall opinion on this phone. Um, yep. Compared to the iPhone 10, obviously, because that's that's the major competitor here, right? That's that's a flagship yeah. for, for Apple. So uh, what, what do you I think mean, of this? Right. I, I, first of all, I love it. it it's... Um, the it is the i think the nicest design in smartphones it's only a slight evolution obviously what they did last year but they only needed a slight evolution um i prefer it to the iphone from a form factor perspective you know the ios versus android thing is a different conversation i i honestly i would say i probably uh, prefer ios overall for a variety of reasons but you know android is mature to the point where it's obviously very uh full featured and useful and usable whatever um the camera's fantastic. Uh, in my own testing, it falls short of the camera in the Pixel 2 XL, and I, I, I'd like to go into a little a bit of detail about that later, but I'll just, I think for most people, uh, they would actually disagree with that assessment, um, and I'll explain why, but the camera is fantastic. It, it's absolutely at the top of the class. It's it's great. Um, the iPhone X camera's great, too, um, and you know just as good in many ways. Um, their version of Android is fine. Like, I don't have a problem with it. Um, if I do decide to keep this phone, I actually, I'm probably going to keep it. If I decide to use it as my daily, you know, use smartphone, 
probably would look into getting the, the Google launcher on there, uh, if only so mm-hmm. I could use Google Assist or the Google app off of the home screen. I prefer that to the Bixby stuff, which I, is useless to me. Oh, um, it, it's, it's terrible, actually. Yeah, I hate it. Uh, so I, did, I, yeah. I disabled the Bixby button. Um, I'm using Google Assistant off of the home button when you do a long press. But the one thing I can't get rid of is that screen off to the left of home. Uh, on a normal Android phone, that's the uh, the Google app, and it gives you. I, yeah. I, just, I actually use it every. I use it to find things. Their, what, what is it? It's their uh, their news thing, right? It's a Bixby based. Yeah, it oh, it, shit. it, it, it yeah. It tries to find stuff. You know, uh, it's it's sort of it's their take on the Android thing. I why and and this is kind of my central complaint about the Samsung. Um, they duplicate a lot of the things that are already in Android, and they often do so in such a way that is. Uh, inferior to what's already in Android, you know, so they have their own calendar app. They have their own email app. They have their own assistant. You know, there's all this stuff. And so actually, um, the email app is one of the things that I actually, I don't, I don't hate. Well, the point isn't, I, I shouldn't even look, the point isn't so much the quality of it. The point is just that it's there, <laughs> you know, like there's isn't just so much. Yeah. yeah. There's just so much stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, look, they, I, to be fair to Samsung, some of the changes they make to Android, I actually really, really like, right? So for example, one of the general things about Android that I like, I prefer over uh, iOS is the way the home screen and then the all app screen works. On iOS, you've mm-hmm. got home screens and all your apps are there. There's nothing you can do about that except make them, put them on secondary screens or put them into folders. On Android, the way it typically works is you have the same setup with home screens, but you can yeah. configure, but, but it, you don't have to have all your apps there. There's a separate all apps interface. So that already is better than iOS. They also give you the ability to put icons wherever you want, which is like a sort of an obvious thing to me that iOS. And you could change the grid layout. I mean, you could you could modify the grid layout and the the icons. icons It's it's great. But the thing that Samsung does over and above the normal Android thing, which I like even better, is they let you have folders inside the all apps list, right? So instead of like scrolling through a huge screen full of icons. Uh, they create. They actually create one. Uh, some folders for you. Like they have Samsung apps, and you can go to. You can put all your Samsung apps in like a folder, and they're not cluttering the, the view of the apps. Like it's kind of a nice additional set of, organization that is unique yeah. above what's you know what's offered in, um, in Android. And I, you know I, the look and feel of it to me is nice. I mean you can, uh, you you have to, and you probably experience this. You you, you will spend days configuring this thing. It, the, the amount of time it takes yes. to go through every little settings interface. And by the way, you have to do it because there are some really vital things that are not on by default or maybe are not optimal by default. You're going to want to well, do What did you this, find? Okay. You know? So I want to say, I want to talk about that. So that was the first yeah. thing that I noticed then um, the customization on this phone. And I, I'm not familiar mm-hmm. with the S eight. I don't know if, if it was like that on yeah. the S eight, but on the S seven and the S six, which I had and the S five, it wasn't like that. You didn't have all the customization that you do on this phone. Um, okay, if you go into so, settings, like you could, you could customize the the sensitivity of the touch screen. You could customize yeah. what the home button does on the bottom. So I've actually customized right. it that I could unlock it with the home button. You could customize uh, yes. um, right. how many different yep. login methods you have. The home That's screen. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's just, endless, oh, it, go, it's it goes on and on. We don't have enough time to talk go through the whole list. Of it's amazing yeah. how many things there are. The two that stand the display, out to me: the I blue filter, the the font size, yeah. the screen resolution, the resolution. Uh, easy right? mode, that that icon was that was an e, that was an ES8, by the way. Um, so the two that stick out in my mind that I think are important are um, Samsung reverses the order of the buttons on the navigation bar in the bottom. So you've got like a a back button, a home button, and then a I think it's called apps button, or like it's it's basically like reverse a commit to what? Just Android in general. Yeah. So if you're coming to Samsung from any other Android phone and you get to this thing, that was that's going to screw you up. Um, I prefer it in the other, the normal organization where back's on the left and they give you that interface. Uh, you can switch the order of the buttons. So, okay, great. So no, no problem. They For whatever yeah. reason, theirs is opposite, but they let you switch it back. That's awesome. But the other thing they do that is just, I love this. I mean, I love this because you think about it. You know, you look at your phone. To use your phone, you're looking at it. A lot of text on the screen. You're looking at lists of things. You know, no matter what the UI is, it's there's going to be text going on. On normal Android, you only have two options to control the size and the way that text looks. There's a there's a general screen zoom feature that zooms all elements on the screen by degrees. You know, 110 percent, 125 percent, whatever it is. And you know, obviously, if you have bad vision, you might want the icons to be big or whatever. That's neat. Yep. And then they offer a a font size. Um, 
uh, slider as well. So you can go small, medium, large, whatever size fonts, and it's fine. If you use the iPhone or iOS, you know that there are additional controls. Uh, they're under accessibility, but they let you do things like uh, add, like make all the text bold. And this is actually a, a really neat thing to do if you're hard of uh, vision, if you have vision issues. And a lot of friends that I have who are love iOS for that reason because they can bold all the text and makes it easier to see. My father, but on my the father's Samsung, like that. yeah, yeah, on the Samsung they go the additional step, and that's what you were just showing. First of all, they have multiple fonts that you can choose. Uh, you don't have to accept just the default system fonts. And some of them have, um, I think the, the correct term for fonts is like heavier weights. And what that means is they're, um, they're basically the strokes are all a little bit thicker. And the effect is something that um, in a word processing program would be called like semi-bold. So in other words, you, you have a font that's a normal weight or thickness or whatever. You could have a light version of that where it appears to be thinner. You have a semi-bold version that's a little bit thicker. And then, of course, a bold version and larger versions and so forth. Um, that little addition over Android, the stock Android, just the ability to have a different font and to choose one that is what I would call a semi-bold font is it makes I, every time the screen comes on, every time I look at the notification shade or uh, any list in, in any application, whatever it is, it makes me smile. Like it's it's yeah. it, it is so beautiful to look at. And uh, the fact that you can customize it according to how you want is, I think, in many ways, the point of Android. You know, it, it's the perfect example of why this platform can make sense. You know? it, it, it absolutely does, you know, and, and I've been going, I've been asking a lot of people about this, right? Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, my father, mm -hmm. uh, he has, he has a, a vision issue. He has something called best disease and it impacts, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a, genetic issue right it's 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 passed down but um i don't have it luckily but the way that it works is that there's like a little dot in the back of your eye um and if this thing over time it starts spreading it's like a little egg yolk and it starts spreading and it could potentially sure. make you blind right uh my yep. father has it on both eyes and it's like at the at the corners so it's spreading right. a little bit so he has like a delay in response and he can't sometimes it it, it depends on the day so for him when he texts a message, he he actually speaks it because he can't see all the letters that he's typing. On Android, right. it's not as easy. You know, the, the, the text-to-speech, for example, it's not that great uh, from my own experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, sure. Um, you know, it's like those little things. But overall, um, who's buying this phone? I, well, I, everybody. <laughs> it's probably. I, well, everybody, but. Yeah. Everybody, but this was the interesting conversation I had on Twitter when I, you know, I was putting out, I'm like, I'm going to, I got it. I got the S nine or I'm getting the S nine. It was something like that. And, and then the other message was, I'm surprised how much I dislike the phone. And everybody said, iOS sucks because you can't customize and it's, it, you can't do this and you yeah, can't do I, that. And my, my question is give me a reason why if I'm in the price bracket, right? Why would I pick this instead of this? Why would I pick android over ios and you know i really uh, couldn't get an answer as far as the layman right as as far as the, right. the the common person that's going into a verizon store i, so I and i still I, haven't gotten that uh, look both of these things are different kinds of compromises right so on ios you give up a little bit of control um, but you know, I'm reminded of the argument that people some people still make for windows phone it's like you know i can't get past uh, Windows Phone because it has tiles and I love the tiles. You know, I love the little live updates and whatever. And it's like, you know what? I, I'm sorry. For most people, the interface on a phone is apps and you go into an app and you, you know, you open the app, you do that whack-a-mole thing. And I always kind of made fun of it, yeah. but the truth is it's become a muscle memory for people. You go into mail, you look, you go into calendar, you look, you go into Twitter, you, do, you know, people go in and out of the apps and, and notifications uh, appear at the top of the screen to alert you that something new has happened. You can click on it. And, or tap on it and go right to that app. It's I, 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 that's kind of a red herring kind of a thing. So, as far as the customization thing goes, yeah, yeah I just pointed out an example where, um, you know, Android has better uh, customization features uh, than than uh, iOS does, yeah. and I and I appreciate that functionality. Like I like it, but the truth is, so what? I mean, I, you know, like you 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 stay, you're going to spend hours like sitting there playing with your stupid phone, like making yeah. it look exactly the way you want. Like it just. But nobody. Use the but stupid when thing, I say you know? nobody, most people, most people that are using smartphones are not doing that. 
We right. That's my point. People Most people, the, show, the people hosting the yeah. show, we do this. Yeah. <laughs> this is, but this is the disconnect I deal yeah. with all the time, and it goes in both directions. You know, it, it's it could be on Twitter, it could be comments on my website, it could be people email me. They're like, Paul, you said, and then it's some perfectly defensible statement that's not an absolute, and that's not true because I do this, and it's like you know people. Mm -hmm have trouble separating their anecdotal personal experiences from the broader needs of every, of the mainstream of, of most people. Yeah. And so I, I'm not perfect. I have my own biases. I have my own personal opinions and all that kind of stuff. But the difference between me and, you know, that person who was complaining is that I've been reviewing software products and hardware products for decades. And I have to put myself in the position of other people and try to understand yeah how this would work for different scenarios. I don't review things, yeah. how they work for me. Although sometimes yeah. when things work really well, I do switch into a mode where it's like, well, well, interesting. Could I use this thing myself? Could this replace something else that I'm using? You know that, but that's yeah. a different discussion. That's not the review. That's Paul's personal, you know, needs and preferences, yeah. whatever. So, you know, well, uh, we've look, said that real many quick. Times, I'm sorry. Right? Just, when, just real quick. Know, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to just I just want to make that sure weird, I don't we got that this. weird delay going on. Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure I don't I just don't want to forget this because um I there is a thing where people have a hard time understanding that no one else feels exactly the way they do. Um there are iOS people who feel very strongly about the iPhone or whatever, and they they cannot understand why anyone could ever use an Android phone. And on the reverse side, there's the exact same thing. Android people are like I would never I could try to, who who could use an iPhone? I, I tell you, you can't even customize where the icons go on the home screen. Well, the answer to that question is Apple sells 75 million of those things every quarter. A lot of people. So that the audience size on both sides is a billion plus. Um, there are a lot of people who can use both of these things. You need to kind of, uh, yeah, you, Andrew, but I mean the audience, you know, you need to understand that your needs are not necessarily universal. And um, I look, the iPhone 10 is a beautiful phone. iOS 11 is certainly has its little issues, but it's a mature operating system. Yes, it has its quirks and its limitations, but you get a payback in the form of performance that never goes away, reliability that never changes, simplicity that is world class. It's a just works experience. Yeah, you know, some people prefer choice. That's cool. You you have Android, you can have it. Um, you know, it, it goes both ways. That's all. I just wanted to make sure that that's part of this conversation because you coming to Android from an iOS perspective, you're going to have run into things where you're like, Ugh, like this isn't as good or this is better. And that's yeah. the right approach. Not this thing is different from what I used to. So it sucks, you know, well, which, not, which isn't what you would do, which is not, what you, but we, we've done the show for almost eight years now, right? Seven, eight years. Yep. And, and I was an Android user for seven years of those years. And I right. said to myself, I will never go to iOS because I feel like I have to use Android in order to comment about it, in order to discuss it and give a yes. fair, uh, a fair overall opinion because I'm in both environments. It, it, I have an iPad, I have a, a secondary iPhone. So I kind of was in both environments until I took the dive to a hundred percent because my work phone became my life phone. You know, that that's just right. how I mix everything together. It's, it's a flaw of mine, but it became my everyday phone. So now I'm separating again and it is a major, major uh, difficulty now for me. You know, because I've gotten so used to it and so comfortable because I went head first. And I always said if I go head first into iOS where I'm Mac and iOS all together, it's going to be a very difficult transition for me to go back. And, you know, I kind of was right. And I want to talk about that transition. I, I want to yep. talk about what I do like about this phone. And again, beautiful phone, phenomenal phone. I just I don't know why anybody uh, that doesn't have these special <laughs> needs. Uh, and special yeah. customization would, would say, you know what? I'm done with iOS. I'm going to go over to Android because I'm going to tell you, it's not an easy transition. I think Android to iOS, much easier. Well, okay. much easier. I, 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 don't, I don't have an opinion on which is easier. I, like I said, I, I go back and forth. But I think there is a, there are cases to be made. You're using Android. I don't know what's happening you're here. You're tired of the performance got, rot. You're tired of all the stupid things that Samsung puts in there. And you, go, and you get an example. iPhone and you're like, oh. I'll give an broke. example, Paul. My phone, okay. I swear, I don't have anything going. It's playing music. My Android right now. I have no idea from where. Sure. I don't have an app open. I swear to God, there's no apps open. Hmm. I can't turn it off. <laughs> I, I, I wish I was joking right now. 
and it just went away. I have no idea where this media is playing from. I don't have it. I have no apps open. <laughs> and that proves my point. <laughs> not, well, no, it's <laughs> not necessarily. I mean, um, the flip side, though, is that the phone. I could also imagine someone who's an iPhone user and they, they, they've been uh, come accustomed to the safe and, and uh, ever free Apple experience. And they, you know, maybe it's gotten a little bit boring. Maybe yeah, the maybe, iPhone I mean, 10 came out. Yeah. And they, they want a bigger screen than that. They want a, yeah. uh, they want what I think is the prettiest and best design in smartphones today, which is the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Um, you know, you, you're going to take advantage of certain things that are, were not available to you on iOS. There are advantages to Android, right? But you're also going to have to deal with the negative too. I mean, but that's the thing. I, that's what I mean. I think in both directions, there are reasons to do, you know, to make that switch. And there are reasons not to. Yeah. Uh, I want to continue this and I want to talk about the stuff that I do like and I don't, you know, a little bit more because this is a big topic and a lot of people, I've seen a lot of reviews and I don't know, man, I, I feel like I woke up one day and now I, now I don't agree with any of these reviewers anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I think, and I'm starting to really feel like everybody's inserting their own bias into how they're judging these devices, good and bad. I want, I want to yeah. kind of go into that. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and a whole lot more. But before we do, I want to thank another one of our great sponsors, and that's HelloFresh. Uh, I'm a big fan of this because it keeps me disciplined. Uh, one thing I don't have uh, when I fall off the wagon when I'm when it comes to eating uh, and dieting, it's a it's a very difficult journey for me to get back into it. And something that HelloFresh has done for me is essentially has set up my meals every day. To and they're they're healthy options are great, uh, and it's set it up where I know what I'm eating every day, and I can kind of predict that you know for dinner we're having this, so I will eat accordingly throughout the day. You know, it's almost like uh, forecasting my life, uh, my meals. So this is the great thing about HelloFresh. Um, if you, they have a great offer for you guys since we've teamed up with them. They're offering thirty dollars off your first week of delivery when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code Andrew thirty. When you sign up. So this is a great thing. This is how it works. You choose a delivery day uh, that works for you. And let's say you're going away on vacation. Guess what? You can put it on pause. If you're out of town, you're going away. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, or, or let's say you decided that you're going to eat out a couple times that week and you don't, you could pause it for that week. It's great. Uh, everything comes pre-measured, labeled meal kits. So you know exactly what ingredients to use and it goes with what recipe. So it's, it's foolproof. Uh, I actually, sometimes it's not foolproof for me because I like to have a little bit of vino when I'm, when I'm cooking and it becomes, uh, my drunk kitchen <laughs> essentially <laughs> where I'm making up stuff. So this is great. It keeps me on track. Right. Uh, so with HelloFresh, they offer a wide variety of chef curated recipes that changes weekly. So you're not getting the same thing every single week. Uh, three plans to choose from. You got the classic, got the veggie and the family. I've done all three and I have to tell you the veggie phenomenal. Uh, I'm not, I'm a meat eater. But I did it because my wife is back to uh, doing a vegetarian diet, and we absolutely loved it. Uh, the classic meal gives you a variety of meat, fish, and uh, seasonal produce. The veggie is a vegetarian recipe that's plant-based protein, grains, and seasonal produce. And, of course, the family is for the whole family. And it's recipes that you'll absolutely love. Uh, I absolutely love my HelloFresh meals, and you should give it a try. Uh, it also it, – the recipes only take like around 30 minutes to cook. So they're quick and easy. I like to take my time because I like to make an event. So this is something we do in my house, uh, and it's absolutely great. Here's the offer, HelloFresh.com. Use the, use the code Andrew30, and you get $30 off your first week of delivery. Again, that's HelloFresh.com. Use the promo code Andrew30. You get $30 off the first week uh, of delivery. I want to thank HelloFresh. Uh, they're actually great, and I use them, and I absolutely love them. So uh, keep them coming. And by, by the way, whenever you buy, whenever you sign up, let me know. Tweet them. Tweet me. You know, it helps all of us out. Uh, Paul, let's talk about the camera. Okay. So you have you have the ten, the iPhone ten. Uh, not anymore. I did. Okay. Yeah. So okay, you did. So let let's compare the iPhone ten to this. In it, it, I know this is a generalization, and we don't like doing that. Who? What has the better <laughs> camera? Oh, um, yeah. So I can't I can't compare them head to head anymore. Um, the Pixel two had a dramatically better camera than the iPhone ten, but the iPhone ten camera was excellent. Um, the primary area in which the Pixel outperformed the ten was in low light conditions. Um, the Samsung, uh, which I can compare head to head with the Pixel two XL, 
has an excellent camera too. So I, I would, I would get, I'd kind of say, uh, it, it's kind of on par with the iPhone 10, I guess, and a little bit below mm -hmm. that of the pixel, but the, but like I said, I, I, I think there are people who, um, would disagree with this assessment, <laughs> right? Okay. And, and, and what I mean by that is, and those pictures aren't necessarily the best examples of why, but think you may remember, I think I, I, I think I, on this podcast discussed this. I think I, um, uh, I think I predicted this. Well, I know I predicted it, I I but I, I think I, I did I, it on before, this podcast. I think you're using your fireplace wrong. Yeah. I don't think those yeah. lights are going to keep you warm. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, it's, yeah, it's an ambient thing. It's talk to my wife. Anyway. Um, when I read about what, uh, Samsung had done with the uh, galaxy S nine plus, and when I watched the keynote event, you know, where they announced the device, they talked about these two apertures, uh, that they had and the automatic ability of the camera to switch between them, particularly in low light conditions where it, yeah. you're in a dimly lit scene outside or inside doesn't matter. And it can tell you need more light because otherwise it's going to be grainy and dark. And so they use the, the wider aperture and it lets in more light, you know, to the camera. And I thought to myself, you know, that sounds like something most people would want. And it sounds very much what I don't want because over the course of using the, the Nexus 6P and then the original Pixel XL and now the Pixel 2 XL, the thing I value most in that camera is its ability to do, handle low light differently, which is this. You're looking at a scene like the picture you showed with the candles. There, there are in that case, there are multiple little light sources, but in some cases, yeah. only there's only like one light source. It doesn't matter. But on the, on those Google cameras, when you uh, select a light source, which you do by tapping the screen where it is, what it does is it 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 makes everything else around it actually darker. And the effect <laughs> that you can have those shots aren't really good examples of this. You've seen my photos. You understand what I'm talking about. And actually, yeah. you've taken photos where you see this as well in bars and whatnot, where there's a colorful backdrop, you focus on the, the whiskey glass or something. It's, it's, it's this gorgeous, vibrant combination of black blacks and HDR colors. And it's beautiful. Um, I really like that effect. And I, and I've taken stunning low light photos all around the world. In fact, I've, you know, as I travel, I take them outside of pictures of cafes and things and whatever. Um, so here's the thing. So <laughs> the, the Samsung does exactly what I thought it would do, which is this. It examines the scene and it says, hey, it's too dark. Let's let in more light. And it, what it does is it lights up the whole scene. It acts like a yeah. flash, but without the, the annoying flash of light that blinds everybody in the room. Yeah. So I think most people will yeah. like that. But that's not what I want. I, 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 I want the picture to look like the thing I'm looking at. And if it's going to be um, changed from what I'm seeing, the, 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 this is now this is me. This is personal uh, yeah. preference. I don't mind a little bit of HDR effect where it's a little more colorful than maybe it is in real life. And I like the effect that Google gives to these low light photos where I can select that light source and it hones in on that thing and then makes everything else darker and it removes the grain when it does that. The, the effect is beautiful. I, what I mean is you don't just take up the camera and take a picture. You, you take up the camera and you select the light source and then you take the picture. You can do it with the Samsung. It doesn't have any effect. And so to me, the, the, the Samsung pictures are too bright. They just brighten it's everything little, up. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so, you know, but it's the, sorry, real quick. <laughs> Hold yeah. on, sorry. I just want to, sorry. Um, the other two things that the Samsung does is uh, the colors are not correct. Um, I've, I took mm -hmm. hundreds of photos over the weekend with my wife and I, we were, you know, side by side, just making sure you're seeing what I'm seeing. It, it uh, the whiteness that it adds changes the color of the picture and it's not color accurate. The Google phone does a much better job with color accuracy, but also in low light conditions, part of the effect of what it's doing softens the photo. You can see it in that, um, uh, the candle picture you showed earlier, not only are the colors wrong, they're kind of a reddish brown orangey color in the Samsung photo. Yeah. Not correct. The Google one is exactly what it looked like, but it's softer. You know, the edges aren't crisp like it 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 it's almost like a like a filter like a vaseline filter or something so here's Sorry. the interesting thing um yep. so i noticed that the red everything was a little too red uh on my photos so yeah. there's, there's, yep. there's two issues one the the selfie felt the selfie mode on this thing which you know i'm still i'm i'm way younger than you paul so i still do selfies uh but the selfie mode i absolutely Fair. love the selfies which is pretty cool 
how it does like the uh, background blur on on a front yeah. facing camera. But something that Samsung tends to do is that it softens up selfie mode. The the front facing camera, they I don't know if it's it's uh, post production they're doing or it's oh, within the sensor, but they're a little it's a little soft. So I did a the same photo with my iPhone seven and this one. And I have to tell you, the iPhone seven was way more of an accurate now Bixby's talking to me. I'm not even talking to you, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, the iPhone Listen, 7 it wouldn't be a podcast has... in 2018 if we were not interrupted by a digital yeah, personal kind of... assistant that thought we were talking to it. Th th it is yeah. not possible to record an it's episode anymore without that happening. Yeah, it, it's 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 the third guest on the show. I get guest requests yeah, yeah, all the time. Exactly. People say, you know, oh, yep. can I be on your show? I'm like, no, I'm sorry, Alexa, or it's taking that spot every week. Um, so. It, it, it seems like it's doing some some manipulation, you know, it's softening up the face so you look a little bit better. I, I mean, I my wife and I were, we looked way better, I mean, more accurately on my iPhone 7. The other thing yeah. that I'm noticing is that there's a lot of red, like the reds, it's a little too red when I'm taking these photos. Right. And it apparently, this is a, this is a known issue. Um, I saw this video the other day. Uh, it was a photographer and he was talking about how he noticed that a lot of the photos that he was taking uh, they look fine on the phone, but when he actually transfers it to his lap, to his Mac, uh, it's a little too red. And he looked at the, I guess, the the information on the phone, and there's a there's a color profile attached to every photo. And when you remove that color profile, it's a way more accurate depiction of what the photo should look like. And he didn't know if this was Samsung doing it or Apple was doing this after it was uploaded, but it may be the same issue where there's a color profile attached to these photos that Samsung is adding and yes. it's making things a little bit too red because I guess they're looking at it as if you're just, if you're looking at it on the phone, it, it's, it should look the best. Right. And they're not thinking <laughs> yeah. about looking at it on your laptop. So that may be the issue and that's an easy fix. You could do it in post or Samsung could realize that there's a problem and remove that color profile from every photo. Yeah. So, so that was um, something that I discovered on it. I, I, look, there are two, two things to the camera. Um, like I said, I think most people w will like very much the photos that this thing takes. I, I, it's a great camera, um, you know, whatever. But the other thing that some people will point out to me, uh, no doubt, <laughs> you know, and it's, it, it's fair to point out, um, there are so many controls in the camera app that you can achieve almost any effect that you're looking for. Um, but I would argue that most people, like I said, click and they're done. They don't, you know, if I'm taking a picture of food, which a lot of people do with cameras, smartphone cameras, um, I'm, I'm not going to think to look for a food mode. I'm just going to take the picture. I'm going to hope that this thing's smart enough just to take a good picture every time. As it turns out, the Samsung camera app has a food mode and it probably, maybe it does improve. I don't know what okay, it does. So where, but it's, where I, is the food mode now? I, I can't find it. I, so I looked and I couldn't find it. If at the top that you can scroll through a list of you know, modes or whatever. Yeah. It's all the way to the left. Yeah. I don't have that on mine. Which version did you have? Hold on. Let me look at it. Which version? It's interesting. So I've had it on my previous versions. Um, yeah. So I don't yes, have the left most mode. So what do you have? What are the modes you have? Uh, edit camera modes. Let's see. I could do no, rear no, 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 camera. No, modes. no, 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 no. Just oh, open yeah, the camera. Go, rear. Yeah. I see a food, but where the hell is it? I'm in the camera. Uh, what do you, yeah, and then you just the scroll to the left, right? Right. It's weird. It does not display on mine. It's it checked looks like off it, uh, the settings. It, it kind of blurs around the middle. It looks like, oh, now yeah, I a got panorama it. Mode, I... There's a pro mode. There's a live focus mode, whatever the frick that is. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, I just super slow-mo, which I haven't gotten to work yet. Um, correctly AR emoji, which is ridiculous. Hyperlapse. It's like, blah, 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 blah. it's like all this stuff. Like it's yeah. just. It might be a little. Just want to take a picture. Just want to take a picture. Yeah. I think it's. I think this is too much for almost anybody. I. I, I just yeah. think it's too much stuff, and I think people get confused. Have you noticed that there's? And they feel stupid. so when you're taking photos. Have you noticed that there's? It's a little bit too sensitive, and you're constantly hitting the wrong button. Because I've had that happen. No, I'm but the I. Wall. Uh, Something that. I, I look. So I've, I've only had the. Th okay. <laughs> I've only had the thing for about a week, but um, I think. I've had, well, no, I don't think. I have had the experience where I take more blurry photos with this thing than I'm used mm. to, and I'm a little weirded by it. Like, 
Um, yeah. For my photo shots, when I do the comparisons, I try to take two or three with each camera. Um, there were a couple of times where I only took one and the Samsung one was unusable because it was blurry. And um, I, I look, I, I take blurry pictures with the Pixel 2. I took some outdoor pictures yesterday of the snow and I posted one of them. You can see it. It's the picture of the chair, the table outside. For some reason, I picked the wrong one and that picture was blurry. I mean, it's just, it happens, you know, but um, I don't know. It's just, yeah. I, oh, but I, I mean, listen, it's a very fast phone. It's great. It handles. It's 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 great. I mean, there's no, I can't. It is great. Say it really is great. not a good phone. I just don't know if I would be happier or as happy if I had the iPhone 10. Um, you know that that's my that's my that's I, my the iPhone thought lineup. I, I iOS overall, like I said, I prefer to um, Android. But where the iPhone is right now, I, I'm not happy with any of the phones the the iphone 8 plus and the 8 and the older phones have that kind of old-fashioned design i've used too many of these really tall thin you know bezel-less designs to ever want to go back to that kind of thing like i did to yeah. me it just feels old-fashioned the iphone 10 is a little too small you know so the rumors are this year apple's going to come up with a bigger version and whatever and, and i'll look at it again i mean i yeah. i it's a pretty phone it's made of premium materials it feels great when you hold it etc cetera, etc cetera. but um I just, I don't know. It's it. None of these are perfect, you know? So for me, you know, kind of go back and forth, whatever. Um, I've got it. It's weird because of all the complaining I've made about the pixel two XL. I recently reset it to test the developed preview of the next version of Android. That's and, great. um, it's actually eliminated a couple of the problems I was having. So there's some problems I can't solve. Like it has audio issues through the uh, USB plug, which is a huge problem for me. And the screen is unreadable outside, but, the performance stuff has been fixed and it, of course it takes i mean awesome photos and uh i've i found i i kind of in, i kind of like the phone now you know for a while i really resented it i was it was so it had so many problems you know uh so but you think that the pixel 2's camera is better than this huh in yeah, your opinion it, it absolutely is yeah. and and by the way i i i will keep testing i mean i'm not done and i and i i will as part of my review go through all of those camera modes more because I'm, you know, like I, I do like the photography stuff. I'm interested in it. Yeah, but like I said, my wife reality, and I spent the whole yeah. weekend in the world. And what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? But you know what? You have all these pro modes, but the reality, you just want to pick up the phone and take a photo. Yeah. And I've taken yeah. hundreds of photos with it and side by side with the pixel camera. And obviously there are exceptions, but by and large and by a wide margin, the Pixel 2 has taken much better photos than the Samsung in all conditions. Outdoor and bright sunlight, indoor and normal, you know, interior lighting and low light conditions inside and out. Um, and and it's and it's not me. It's not me like some it's not just me and my own subjective biases about whatever. Uh, my kid, my uh, son was home for the weekend. We did stuff with him. I subjected my family to these side by side photos. My daughter and my son also looked at these photos as we were taking them. And, uh, and my wife did all weekend and everyone agreed. It was, it was like, yeah, no, that's, it's clearly, you can, you can see it when you're in the room and you can, you can hold the camera up and you can see the wall and you can see the color of the, in the picture of the wall. And you can say, no, that's not what this looks like. And then you look at the pixel and you're like, yeah, there it is. That's exactly what that looks like. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. it, so many varieties, so many choices. I, and I, I really don't know which, which I would pick. You know, like if, if uh, you know, it's it's a phenomenal. I mean, it's a phenomenal phone, but I, I I'm it surprised. Is. I it don't is. love it. I don't love it. <laughs> um, you know, I just I don't love it. I don't know. So but, you know, I, the, the like I, stuff but, is annoying. You're absolutely right. You pick this thing up, and you know, it comes on, and it's got that kind of elegant screen wrap around the edges. Um, I, I've, I've configured it the way I like it and it's, it, the screen is rich and, and deep, you know, it's got really kind of deep colors that are contrasty colors, I guess it's got that text thing going on, which I mentioned earlier, which I love. I mean, I, I completely understand why somebody would want this. It, it, it's, it is a desirable device, you know, whether it's the perfect, you know, one for me is, you know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but 
um, I, you know, I have my own peculiar and particular needs. Everyone does, right? But yeah, um, I think most people, I, I don't know. I, I think obviously if you have an S8 or an S8 Plus, you're not going to get this. There's no reason. Um, that camera is very good too, by the way. Uh, my wife has one. Um, but, and, you know, obviously form factor, UI, whatever, it's very, very close. Um, but for everyone else, like this is a viable choice. I mean, this is, this is something you should look at. Yeah, I think uh, I, I so my phone thinks that I'm I'm, I'm playing a song called Here Comes the Love <laughs> came here for love, but I have no idea why it's telling me this. I'm not playing this. I don't know what song this is. Right. That's funny. It's, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what it thinks. Uh, guys, I, I and I have, you know, we're going to go into this a little bit more over the next couple of weeks when I have more, you know, once I've adjusted a little bit more again, this is not my you know, this is not the end all be all. This is not my overall review of this. I'm big on long term testing and I'm I'm big on long term usage. That's the only way you could kind of yeah. give a fair assessment of it's good. I, I this is just like three days worth. And and I criticize these reviewers that get a phone for 24 hours and they write a whole review about what's great and what's not, because the reality <laughs> is sure. you can't. It, it's not enough time. It's not it, you. I know it's it's first come, so... first hit. you know, everybody sees it, but. Go ahead, Paul. I um I, I I'm a little reticent to call out this particular publication. Uh, it's one that I used to trust very much, uh, but because of this other device that we're going to talk about, I think the uh, the Qualcomm um, based NVX2. I know for a fact that on what day they got it, I know for a fact on what day they posted their review. And they did not spend enough time with that to understand what this device is all about. And I, I, I'm a little freaked by this kind of thing because these guys used to be good. And, um, they also did like benchmarks on it, which don't mean anything. This is running a completely different core architecture or uh, CPU architecture. The benchmarks are, um, optimized for Intel. Like it, yeah. That doesn't doesn't show anything, <laughs> you know. Uh, by the way, it is a slow machine, but I mean, it's it's I, I so now I'm in kind of a weird spot because I used to always recommend these guys to people, and it's like uh, they clearly have um, let it slip a little bit in the quality control mm. department, you know. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let, let's take a little break. Uh, I want to okay. talk about our great sponsor, someone that's been with us for a long time, and that's Audible. Uh, Paul, isn't it amazing? Like you're a busy guy, and I'm and I'm pretty busy. I I just I love reading books, but I, I no longer have the time to sit there and read a book anymore. So the fact that Audible makes it so easy to keep up with you know these these great books, and they're constantly updating their list and constantly new stuff, uh, it's amazing. Uh, and they have a great offer for you guys. If you go to audible.com/andrew or you text Andrew to five hundred five hundred. Uh, you can get a great offer. And that's a free audiobook and 30 day free trial. That's again, if you go to audible.com slash Andrew or text Andrew to 500, 500, you get a 30 day free trial and a free audiobook to pick. So you could test it out. Uh, is there anything? What's the last audiobook that you got, Paul? Is there anything you're listening to right now? Yeah, I'm always listening to audiobooks. Um, in fact, there's a, uh, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a remake or like a new version. I think it's a pet cemetery is coming out sometime in the next month or two, which I've got my little wish list uh, that I'm waiting on. But the two that I'm listening to right now are is something called West Cork, which is a crime series that takes place in this case in Ireland, um, which is available mm -hmm. free if you have an audible subscription. Cause remember they have those channel type things and you can actually, you know, download it and listen to it offline. It's only seven, eight hours. Uh, but the, the most recent one that I bought and I'm also listening to right now is called the looming tower. And the reason I got oh, this nice. is it was just turned into a TV series on Hulu and it's about the build up to nine 11. And so they m told mostly from the perspective of, um, people in the Arab world, not the United States, although I guess there are, I haven't hit on them yet, but I guess there are a couple of, um, key people in the government who were kind of aware of what could have, could be happening. And, and of course did happen. So it's kind of a behind the scenes, um, you know, a uh, nonfiction account of, uh, yeah, the, the, actually the decades leading up to nine 11. Yeah. I mean, that's excellent. I'm actually, I just started the Hulu, uh, the Hulu, uh, show. Yeah, it's great. It, it's great. And yeah. you know what, that'll be my next audio book. Uh, and it could be yours. If you go to audible.com slash Andrew or text Andrew to 500, 500, 
You get your free audio book. Let it be the Looming Tower this week. And you get a 30-day free trial of Audible. It's you can the good story of the century. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they have unbelievable <laughs> stuff. And every day, they, 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 every week, they're adding more and more titles. So it's amazing. Um, I want to thank Audible for supporting the show. Paul, let's talk about HP. And let's talk about this, uh, this Qualcomm NV2. Yeah. I, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's early days. I, I, I think the, you know, performance wise, this is going to be the, <clears throat> the rough patch. Um, the version I have has eight gigs of Ram and two fifty six on the storage. So this is as good as the performance is going to get. And it's not great. I mean, it's, this is, uh, very much performs like a low end, you know, Intel. And by low end, I mean, core M Y series, or maybe even like Adam slash Celeron slash wow. Pentium class. So very low end. Uh, yeah. system yeah it's not you're not going to play games on it you're not going to develop software on it you're not going to do any you know uh, lots of video editing or anything like that um but that's not what it's for right so th this addresses the part of the market that might be satisfied with an ipad pro a macbook like the base macbook or a chromebook and the idea is that when you're out in the world with the device really what you're doing most of the time is consuming content you're reading the web, you're reading eBooks, you're reading whatever you are watching videos, maybe on a flight or something. And what you value is, uh, the long, you know, ba battery life of the device, but you have occasional need to use a real keyboard to create real documents or whatever work you might be doing. And the advantage of this over say all those other devices is that you can run full Microsoft office, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually you can do that on the MacBook, but, um, you know, the full Windows apps are available too if you want them. Now, they, they don't run great. I haven't done a lot of testing yet, but my experience so far, you know, you do things like bring up Google Chrome for the first time and you sign in. And uh, I do, I review a lot of devices and I'm always bringing new devices online. I go through the same series of steps on all of them. I sign into Chrome and, and my extensions install and new tabs open and I maybe have to sign into things. Uh, and it, man, you can see it like um, it, it happens slowly on this device. Like it's just, it's leisurely. Um, but as far as like the other stuff goes, so the other two advantages are the battery life thing that I mentioned and also cellular connectivity. It's an always connected PC. So I grabbed a data SIM from Project Fi, popped it in, typed in an AP, APN code, bing, it's up, it works great. So that stuff works great. Um, I need to test it in the sense that like, you know, in other words, I'm going to take it away from Wi-Fi. It switches over automatically, I assume. I've not yet tested that. Um, I've tested that the cellular data works by turning off Wi-Fi, but I need to test the, you know, how it transitions and then the battery life. So I, <laughs> this one's pretty cool. So the, the claim battery life on this device is 20 hours, you know, about 20 hours, I think is how they say it. And, uh, yesterday before we did windows weekly at about 10 of two, I started my battery life test after configuring the device. Like I do for all of the laptops that I test and it, it basically runs through this thing and it just goes until the battery dies. And, um, you know, dinner came and I looked at it and had, it was, you know, 80% done. And I, you know, we started watching TV and I looked at it, it was like down to 70%. It went to bed, you know, it was down to I don't know, 40% or whatever it was. And I woke up this morning and it was still going. It was maybe eight mm -hmm. or 9% battery life left. And, uh, at about nine 30 ish, I think it was the screen went dark and it went into connected standby. So I brought it back up. I went through a bunch of you know stuff to make this happen. I won't bore you with this story, but it's on the site if you want to read about it, because it's, uh, it's running a constrained version of windows. So it's, it's hard to do some things, but I finally got the battery report that windows provides and the battery life was nine hours, uh, sorry, 19 hours and 45 minutes. And, oh. um, that's excellent. <laughs> like that is amazing. And, and, and so, you to, know what, to the put 15 that in more minutes, it would have, it would have been it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it basically did it. I mean, it had 3% battery left. I mean, I suppose I could have forced the issue, but, um, most uh, of the computers that I've reviewed over the past two years, the good ones get eight to 10 hours of battery life. Um, I've had a few that are in the teens, you know, Surface Book 2 got uh, 15 hours-ish of battery life. That thing has two batteries, by the way. <laughs> so, and it's a humongous machine. So the, it's got lots of battery. Um, and then the Surface laptop got 13 hours. And then I think below that, uh, we're probably looking at most machines were 10 or, or less. Um, so almost 20 hours of battery life on the exact same test is, uh, really astonishing. Like that's amazing. The, the, so, sorry, <laughs> the other half of this is real quick is, uh, what I call uptime and, and it's a combination of battery life and standby. So 
this I'll need time to test, obviously, but I should be able to leave this thing unplugged, let it go to sleep naturally, let it sit there for three days or three hours. It doesn't matter. Keep using it. Let it keep going to sleep. And if I, if I did leave it sitting there for days, like it should lose almost nothing in battery life. And that's the, the benefit of the Snapdragon processor architecture. They have big cores for power and they have small cores for efficiency. When this thing's sleeping, it's only using the efficiency cores. So it runs in a super low power mode. That's not possible on an Intel chipset. And that's why yeah. uh, those devices will lose power over time, even when they're sleeping. I'm curious if we had a comparable Intel version of this, right? To do so, a head to head. I wonder what the Intel one would get. In, uh, HP is going to sell that device, Andrew. So we are going to be able to yeah. test that soon. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head which chipset it uses. Um, it's it's thicker. Um, it will require some form of heat dissipation that this device doesn't have. I don't know if that means fans or just passive heat Disp uh, dispension, dispensation. What's the word? <laughs> this heat uh, dispersal, whatever. Um, it is heavier. It does not get as much battery life. I think on, uh, it could be as much as 15 though. Um, it could be in that yeah. range. So it's, it's, it's not horrible. It's not bad. Or it's not allegedly not horrible. It's not out yet. So I don't, I don't have one, but um, I am going to try to review that as well. I know we're out of time and this is not our regular uh, time yeah. slot where we're on Tuesdays now where we have a lot more time to, to kind of go into this stuff. But um, have you noticed anything weird with the, the emulation? Because essentially soon hardware emulation to run Windows. Uh, do you think that plays a factor in the performance? No, not. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, uh, as far as the battery life test goes, I use a, um, a store app. Uh, so it's not, the battery life wasn't impacted by emulation. Um, the performance absolutely is. And there are other little side issues. It can only run 32 apps right now. And that means 32 bits apps that are in the store and 32 bit apps are available online. So if you download Chrome, you're getting the 32 bit version. I just installed mm -hmm. Visual Studio Code, which is a 64 bit app, and it would not install. Microsoft offers a 32 bit version. You have to go kind of hunt for it. That one installed fine. Um, compatibility wise, I've seen some good stuff. Like um, when I install Markdown Pad, it requires two different sets of, um, I don't know what to call them, like basically uh, developer DLLs from two different sources, one of which is Microsoft. They're oh, both yeah. out of date. It's all x86 code. They installed fine. Um, that's amazing. And then there's weird stuff that I sort of didn't expect. Um, Adobe Photoshop Elements is in the store. Should work fine on this. The thing runs store apps. Doesn't install because actually it's a 64-bit store app, and this thing can only run 32-bit apps. So I can't actually use Photoshop, even though it technically, you know, could work. Um, yeah. I, I think my understanding is that I think I, I could be I could be off on this, but I believe that ARM 64 apps will eventually be made to run on this thing. So if it's a native store app, it compiles to ARM 64 bit. It should work in the future. It doesn't work now. The operating system is actually 64 bit, but right now it only runs 32 bit apps. The problem is Adobe Photoshop Elements is a is a 64 bit desktop app. I don't believe they're ever gonna. I don't think that one is ever gonna work. But I, that one I could be wrong on. It doesn't work now. That's so much. I, I mean, I'm curious to see what the next version of this, you know, this is first gen. And uh, I mean, this is a great, this yeah. is great progress and more devices for the consumer and more competition. And maybe this will give Intel a little kick in the butt to say, okay, you know what? we got to get our act together when it comes to low powered, yes. you know, mobility based right. uh, computers because they're lower end devices. They're not that great. You know? Yeah, they, um, uh, the path forward for Intel is clear. Um, you know, they have other issues to deal with too, though. Um, obviously, the Spectre meltdown stuff is impacting yeah. the way they develop processors. So they're making changes for future things. Um, the fact that this thing is, it, look, I, this thing is not going to be a huge success out of the gate. There's no doubt about it. I think most people are going to be disappointed with the performance. Um, so Intel has a little bit of breathing room. But the problem is uh, Qualcomm in particular has an, already has a newer generation of CPU that's out than this. It offers some incredible performance benefit. It will probably be better optimized for Windows as well. So the next version of these devices running the next generation chip, uh, I think is going to make a big difference. And of course, the emulation software will get better over time as well as yeah. these things do. So um, right now, hey, this is the first one. It, it, it's fascinating as kind of a, a science experiment. Um, and I and I do think it satisfies some need for a certain population of people. But 
you know, the performance is, I think it's going to be a negative uh, for most people. What's the price on that, on the uh, X2? So I don't know what the version I have costs. I, the base version is four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and it's nine ninety nine. Um, that sounds all like a lot until you compare it to a MacBook, which is more expensive or to an iPad pro with the keyboard and the, uh, pen, both of which are included with this device, mm -hmm. which are extra cost. Those devices are two to $350 more expensive, um, than this thing. And then my version has eight gigs of RAM. Like I said, and two fifty six. I'm going to guess it's 1299. That's the same price as an equivalent MacBook. Um, yeah. but you get, of course, pen and touch support, which you don't get on a MacBook and it comes apart. You can use it like a tablet, uh, which you don't yeah, get on the Mac. Very interesting. Um, next week we'll we'll dive a little bit more detail into both these. Yeah, I, and I'll have more experience Samsung journey. With it, and your, yeah, yep. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I know you have to go to a meeting. Yeah, uh, yep. and I have to go to a meeting actually. Uh, I'm at I'm at work, guys. I don't know if you guys could see. You can tell he's at work. It looks like you're on the set of um, Logan's Run or something like a like a '70s yeah. sci-fi movie. That's that's kind of what I'm in. One one three eight or something. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the no. chairs? Yeah, it's just the Is whiteness the of it. it. Like the stormtrooper yeah. lounge. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I've locked myself in here, and I have to get back to the meeting. <laughs> uh, guys, go to our website gfknetwork.com. You can subscribe. Subscribe to the show. Uh, I urge you, please <laughs> go subscribe. We're on YouTube. We're on iTunes. Wherever our podcasts are available, audio and video form. Uh, we're not doing a bonus show this week, but if you like the show and you enjoy the show, please fund us. patreoncom slash tech. Uh, we've been doing it the last couple of weeks. Oh, by the way, Paul, I got a Raspberry Pi. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you got it? I got do, it. And, and like yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to build it out. Um, I got yeah. it last night when I got home, and I got like a little NES case for it. It's like this big. It's cute. Yep. Tiny. And I got two controllers, so I'm going to build this thing out, uh, and we'll talk about it next week. I'll probably do that this weekend, and I'll probably take a couple photos of it, and we'll talk about it next week on the show. And, of course, uh, we'll continue talking about my journey with the S9 Plus and uh, everything else that's going on. Guys, uh, go to therot.com, all things Paul. Go check it out there. Sign up for premium. Uh, great, great blogs, great posts, great uh, great shows. Every day, Paul's doing something. So it's it's amazing. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter at therot. You can follow me at Andrew Zarian, and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye for now.